what this is telling me is one, obviously the the first thing that you see out of this, right, is like, whoa, Huggy Wuggy's huge. He's the size of a house. We knew that, right? That's not really telling us new information. Instead, what this is really indicating to me is that this is where Huggy wanted to run back to. And welcome to GT Not Live, where it is a new new week and a new life and a new uh, poppy playtime. What, yeah, what is going? On? I, I walked in. Ash is like, we're doing poppy playtime, and I'm like, they, they released something that close to project playtime. So, what 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 happened? <laughs> what 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 what? Yeah, so I'm like Crash Bandicoot from like what was that? 2018, 2019. Wow. Wow! Whoa, 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 whoa! I forgot they released a new Crash Bandicoot game. That was, that was wild. I'm, ta- I'm talking about that meme. I, who cares about new Crash Bandicoot games? I'm talking about new Crash Bandicoot meme content. That's, oh yeah. I'm here for the spicy Crash Bandicoot memes. Whoa, 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 whoa! I loved Crash Bandicoot. Anyone remember that? Remember that collective fever dream? Sometimes I think back at memes that like surged in popularity, and you're like, oh yeah, that was a thing. Remember fidget spinners? Of course. I mean, like, that was a, that was a, a huge, that was like a, almost a massive year-long trend on YouTube. What happened to those? And then people were melt, making, like, melting fidget spinners, ice fidget spinners. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Now, now, what do you got? Now, what do you fidget with? I mean, the fidget cube came out. I, then the cube came out. Right in the cube. And now the cube's kind of, like, overshadowed the spinner. Yeah. I mean, saying? but it's got so many sides. You, you live long enough to see yourself become the villain, I guess, fidget spinners. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Well, tell me about Poppy. What's going on with Poppy? Yeah. So, you know, um, I have, since starting my life here, um, yeah. I've hit the notification bell on a lot of different channels. You like to comment and subscribe and then hit the notification bell? I sure as so heck be updated. Okay. And what, what, who have you hit the notification bell of? Um, so in this instance, Mob Entertainment. Yes. Um, Makers of Poppy Playtime. Yes. And I saw this weird, like, analog horror, like, title. It was, like, .mp4 with, like, the underscores and the rant, you know, that kind of thing. And I was like, that's so funny that you do that, Mob, because I know someone (laughs) who loves that kind of thing. Oh, that's me. That's me. I'm the guy who loves that sort of thing. (laughs) Yeah, it's It's you. It's It's you. It's you. Yeah. Wait, so they uploaded a video, like an analog horror video? They're like, oh man, if we're titling this, it it can't be like, whoa, spooky found footage, hashtag you will die. It's, it's, you know, uh, video cassette tape name with date. Yeah, it has a year from the 20th century, which is how you know. Is it the 80s? Is it the 80s? Um, it is not. Okay. Is it the 90s? Yes. Okay. Good job. Acceptable. Acceptable yeah. range. Yeah, it's Acceptable fine. range of analog horror. Okay. So is it is it theorized? I, I'm assuming that since I'm on the couch, it's theorizable. So I, you know, I hit this notification. Yes. And I saw it a little late, albeit. Um, and I scrolled down to the top comment. Yeah. And the top comment was, man, I cannot wait to see Matt Pat make a 30 minute video about this. <laughs> How and I was it? like, it, just like, you wait. Is it like 30 seconds? Because <laughs> usually you take it and then multiply it by like 10x or whatever. Yeah, yeah actually, exactly. It's just under three minutes. <laughs> and if you multiply by 10, I'm like, that's perfect. Okay, that's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Oh, thanks. Thanks, random commenter. I'll, we'll have to dig into the comments and see who you are so that way I can call you out. That's amazing. Okay, yeah. Let's. Well, then... Let's not waste any time. We've got an hour-long video. This is going to be broken up into two parts. <laughs> knowing us. Yeah. It's a three, it's a three-minute video. Oh, man. Three minutes is, is long for us. Yeah. That's, that's like a four-part reaction right there. I actually uh, lied. It, I said it was under three minutes. It's actually a little over three minutes. Oh, really? So it could be a three-parter. <sighs> wow. Wow. This is this is our new series, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to hold us over in content until, like, the Security Breach DLC comes out. That's so true. That's amazing. All right. Cool. I, I'm excited about this. So uh, here, you got pulled up? Yes, I do. Excellent. Here, let me just exit out of this real quick. Uh, let's see. We got restricted. Oh, yeah. We got restricted underscore disappearance. 
061819921992.mp4. You are so right. There it is. Boom. You, you, you got it. That's That right there is the tag that lets you know. Oh, yeah. There's underscores in here. There's a file format in here. Although, and, and quick question, all you friendos, uh, you too, Ash. MP4, did it exist in 1992? This would be like a, mm-hmm. um, you know, a, a chronology thing. Like, is this, what's the word? Anna, Anna, Anna shoot. It's not anachronistic. I don't know why. Like, an, anachronistic. Right? Anachronistic is when something does not fit in the time period. And so it's like when the Starbucks coffee cup was in Game of Thrones. And everyone's like, there's a Starbucks coffee cup in that scene of Game of Thrones. They're like, whoopsie. <laughs> That's anachronistic, right? Yeah. So uh, not in the chronology. Is MP4, was MP4 as a format in 1992? I can't believe that it was. It definitely wasn't. Right? MP3s, the MP4 is like an early 2000s thing. Right, exactly. MP3s. 92 is super early. Like, if this is VHS tape, you're not recording it on that. Anyway, I I, I would call that out. So, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm the one who's nerdy enough to think about that sort of stuff. Like, that's no skin off of Mob Entertainment's nose, but I just call it out. Like, you might want to rephrase it into a different format or just double check for me. I would, uh, here, when did the, here, I'm, I as well do it for you. When did the MP4 format start? Sure. Uh, 2001. MP4 file was first utilized in 2001. Yeah, so so just so you know, you're about 10 years too early on that one, guys. Um, but yeah, maybe is. someone converted it. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> After the fact. I mean, maybe they're they're like, let's take this VHS tape, let's convert it into digital. Like, yeah. you, like I mean, we've I've done that where I've saved my digital files so I don't lose them. Digital anyway. archiving. Right. Exactly. Also, Min's not so secret cool war. Why would I want not so secret cool war? I want secret cool. All right, here we go. Remote access. Uh, let me make sure closed captions on. Just think, nope, no, nope, that's not an option. Fantastic. Your play speed's on like 1.5. My play speed, oh, there, she's always, always on. <laughs> uh, here, hey, nothing in the description. Uh, is there anything in the description? Anything like hidden, invisible? No, it doesn't seem to be. Okay, let's hop into it. Let's see. Analog Horror meets Poppy Playtime! Let's go! Oh yeah! Get some good driving. He's on 1170. He's uh, heading south along the utility vehicle route. What exactly do we do here? Um, okay, give us a second. We're gonna try and cut him off at the crossing up ahead. Keep him from getting onto public roads. Keep tailing him for now, and keep us updated. Ooh, we follow. Okay. Uh, 10, 27 p.m., uh, 6, 18, 92. 92, so this gives us a rough idea of the date. Um, according to the existing time, I'm trying to think back to our previous theory. 92 was roughly when we said that the company started to close, I believe, if I remember right. Uh, cause we said that Huggy Wuggy was created in, what was it, late 80s, like 87-ish era. And I, I remember us coming to the conclusion that BoogieBot uh, was the last toy released in the timeline. Um, real quick, BoogieBot NFT. <laughs> I hate that I have to go back to the NFTs every time. It makes me so sad. Uh, BoogieBot, he came out in, what's, what's the back? Oh, come on. Give me his back. It's, it's 90. The backs of them were the ones that had the... Boogiebot NFT back. I guess I could look up Boogiebot 1992 at this point, right? The the character design in this game, legit. Boogiebot. Okay. Here, just Boogiebot. Here. Uh, date 93. Yeah, creation date 93. Okay. So that so we're close to near the end of uh Playtime Co.'s life. Uh, which was one of the things that we've been keeping track of because BoogieBot is canonically, at least as far as we know at this point, the last toy that the company released before shutting down, everyone disappeared. We predict, or kind of assumed in that last theory that we did, that uh, Project Playtime is happening in that interim period because we see Huggy Wuggy, Mommy Longlegs, all of them running around trying to get people out of the facility. Uh, Hey, don't make more giant toys, get out of here. That's the whole concept of Project Playtime. Uh, and then the game starts. Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 starts with us getting the letter saying, what happened to everyone disappearing in this factory? Come back and check it out. And then that's when we unleash Poppy and all that. So 
this is towards the end of the timeline. So already it's an important lore clue here that we're starting in 92. All right. Uh, experiment 1170 exits the facility through an open delivery bay door in the production wing. Two staff members witness the incident and hit the al emergency alarm. Uh, 1170 is Huggy, if I remember right. Cam 41. Oh man, are we switching between security cams? Gotta love it. FNAF style! Oh! Cool! Oh wow! Oh, he a big boy! He be running. He be running, big boy. 10.30 p.m. Uh, all available security staff and vehicles are mustered and begin... <laughs> they're not mustered. Mustered and begin... Oh, shoot. And begin pursuit of 1170. By this time, 1170 is estimated to have traveled a half mile from the facility. Okay, so he's... So in three minutes... In three minutes, he's traveled a half mile. Here we go. I forget what my half mile time was. That was the word. Good for them. This is this is legit. Oh! 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 oh, 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 buddy! Oh, that was awesome. That was great. What a what a great animation. Wow! Wow! Just bodied it. Bam! 10.38. Okay, the security team attempts to block and surround 1170 at a railroad crossing. Three rounds of tranquilizer darts are fired, and 1170 is hit once in the left leg. 1170 manages to flee into the woods. Okay. So again, we're getting confirmation that it is a, an organic creature that tranquilizer darts can work on. And I know we established that pretty early in the first theory, but again, confirmation that these are not robots or actual toys or anything like that, the, that they are made of organic materials that can be tranquilized, that can be put to sleep, uh, that do live uh, and bleed and, and eat and things like that. So, okay. How do you bring it down? <laughs> Curious. So eventually they get back into the facility. We know that he winds up there at some point. The security team splits into small groups and continues after 1170 on foot. I love this. It's so analog horror -y. I love this trope. It's amazing. Is that him? It's called Spot the Hook. Oh, there he is! <laughs> Wait, where are you at, bud? Oh, yeah, there he is! Where are all these security cams? Who's who's posting up their security cams in the middle of the... Just, like, random spots in the middle of the woods? That's fine. We're good. Okay, 10.50 uh, to, oh wow, 10.50 to 3.38 a.m. So it's gone for a while. Uh, the search area expands to over four square miles, extending into nearby residential areas. Hmm. Oh man, is he gonna be in a house? He gonna be popping out of the house? I do wonder. Have we, have, a, have we officially established where Huggy is? Where, where Playtime Co. is? I don't think we have. We've, we've talked a lot about the timeline. We've talked a lot about the monsters, what they're made out of, uh, you know, 1006, all that, the prototype. We haven't talked about where they are. I wonder if this topographic map might allow us to be able to figure that out. Not sure. Uh, kind of skeptical about that sort of thing. Because, uh, I mean, this seems like it'd be a very narrow area. But you see that there's some, like, either key regional markings. You get some topography here. Uh, see some hills, things like that. So, and maybe we could clean it up to be able to see what's over there. Not sure. But I see a map and I'm like, oh, there's a location. Outside of effective range, the security team's radios become unreliable. Oh, man. 11.33 p.m. 92. Oh. Oh, no. Someone be oh, it's a deer. Oh, no. I thought it was a log. I thought it was a bloody log. Oh, poor deer. Well, that means... Suspicious mound. Should pop out of the mound? Wait. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, wow. This is great. This is really solid. Good for them. They went hard on this. Oh, look at how big he is! Yes! Interesting. Uh... Huggy. I don't know if this is... Uh... 
What? Oh, this? Huggy Buggy Big Mouth Bobby Playtime Mask. Oh, this is for your cosplay costume, obviously. Nightmare fuel. That is that is pretty horrific. Like, <laughs> add this into your next iteration of Poppy Playtime, guys. There it is. <laughs> it's rough. That is rough, man. That's experiment, like, 1071. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this is, bu this is yeah, this is pre-Huggy era. <laughs> wow, man. I, something tells me that that might not be official merch. <laughs> Just saying. Um... Oh, he does have a blue bow tie. I was the reason I stopped and the reason I, I pulled this up, right, is because I'm like, oh, is he actually? I, I guess I've never really noticed his bow tie or his little string before. I always, I guess, assumed, or maybe I'd passively noticed it, but like Mandela catalog or Mandela effect inside of my brain was like, oh, it's yellow. And so when I saw it be blue here, I'm like, that's weird. But apparently, it's moving blue the whole time. So now I know. I never noticed that. This is great. Also, if I'm a if I'm an adult, if I'm an adult security guard, and this is hug like look at the size difference. I know you get to see it a little bit in the game where you get to see like how massive he is, but you don't get to actually like experience like it's different seeing it in video format versus like video game through that art style format. So this is cool. Oh. Awesome. During the search, several staff are killed by 1170, even more go missing. One winds up in a tree, apparently. Rough. <laughs> Not great. Not great. Total casualties, five dead, six missing. Am I, recognize, am I supposed to recognize any of these people? One, two, three, four, five, six, missing. Okay. Because uh, they have shown images of one or two past employees. There was the whole ARG that we talked about briefly in the last theory uh, that shows off one of the key figures. I'm not recognizing any of these faces as like, oh yeah, that's clearly Leith Pierre, or that's clearly, you know, so-and-so and such-and-such. -and -such. But that's good to know that, okay, so there's 11 people, six have gone missing. And one of them looks a lot like one of our team members. Who? Right column, middle. Does that not look like Josiah to you? Oh, it does look like <laughs> Josiah. <laughs> it's true, actually, you're right. <laughs> That's totally fair. This, see, you're you're saying that this whole time. I just see the guy, the first guy, and I'm like, oh, it's like Walt, generic Walter White, it's like, <laughs> like Kirkland branded Walter White. Walter's like, we gotta cook. He's like, we gotta make toys, Jesse. Oh my god. I am the one who plays. I am the one who plays. <laughs> I mean, poppy, poppies. Opium. <laughs> you <on>. know. <laughs> Drug kingpin, it's all coming together. Yeah. We're gonna take the poppies. We're gonna make, we're gonna make meth, Jesse. Great, thanks, bud. That's what that red gas was in the. That's what the red gas. See, yeah. who else are you gonna get to make your the gas masks? Very prominent and prevalent feature sure. in in Breaking Bad. There it is. The <laughs> this is it. There's the Breaking be Bad a lore is, is poppy. Poppy Playtime is the unofficial sequel to Breaking Bad. Are you kidding me? Yeah, there it is. Wait, but in the timeline. Actually, in the timeline, what would it be? No, it uh, it'd be a prequel. It would be it would be a prequel. Yeah. But maybe Walter had some secret training. I was gonna Playtime say Playtime Co. That's what it is. Walter started his career and his drug training at Playtime Co. And then he's like, you know what? I feel bad about this. I'm gonna be a high school teacher. He becomes a high school teacher. Is like, hey, this isn't paying me well. But Playtime Co. has shut down. At that point. He can't go back. Close. He can't go back. No. For that paycheck. And so what's he do? He hops into an RV and starts cooking with Jesse. Yeah. Done. Who's, who's now all grown up. Who's all grown up. Yep. <laughs> all grown up. He was one of those kids. Maybe he was one, you know. You Maybe know. they met at Playtime Co. That's it. He was one of the kids who was being tested in Playtime Co. Boom. There's a theory for you. There's some theory crafted. Man. We gotta cook. There we go. <laughs> this is no. Also, these two look like twins. Just call it out. Don't they look very similar to each other? They kind of do. Maybe it's just me. No, it's not just me. They're definitely twins. Okay, that's my head cannon. <laughs> this is all my head cannon now. Okay, what do we got? Hold on, was that a gun? That their gun, I guess? That part of the tree? It doesn't really matter either way. It doesn't seem like it's important. I think we're just meant to hear its ominous roar from the background. It takes nearly four hours to relocate and sedate 1170. 
Ooh, hey, we got documents. Uh, let's see. How 1170 was able to access the ventilation system without security's realization is beyond me. It is only blind luck that we found him before somebody else did, and it cost us lives. The innovation department is not happy. I am not happy. Leith Pierre, uh, Playtime Co. Head of Innovation. And what's this up there at the very tippy top? Taken. Taken. Urgency. Taken. Urgency? C N. It ends with a Y. It's got a G in there. That probably doesn't matter. Um... So, and, and this is helping, I guess, understand what Leith Pierre does, because, like, Head of Innovation, I've never really stopped to think about, but, and it's, and it's a weird title, right? Like, typical companies don't really have too many heads of innovation. Like, it's a very vague, heady, obscure title. But now you start to figure out, like, oh, if Leith Pierre is the one who's, like, mad about this, and he's kind of the boss who's like, hey, you lost my thing... Leith Pierre is the one who's pushing forward a lot of these experiments, right? So we've talked a little bit in the past about the head of Playtime Co. And about how he might not be as bad of a guy. He might not have even been involved in any of these experiments, right? Like, at best, you know, he might have just been, Hey, my daughter died. I want to bring her back to life. Let's use poppy flowers or let's figure out a way to bring her back to life. May At most, maybe that's what he knows. But it's unclear what his level of knowledge is. Here... You have Leith Pierre, who's very clearly the one boots on the ground, knowing that these experiments exist, that they're going on, that they're escaping and killing people. And so the idea of he's head of innovation. He's not working on the toys. He's working on these like living creatures, right? Uh, he is the one who's innovating the business and figuring out new things that they can do. So in pl uh, Project Playtime, we learned that the toys, the giant toys, were made to work as helpers around the factory, right, to carry things, to move things, to uh, push and pull things, acting as security guards, things like that. So all of that is coming from him. So I think, th this is actually really important for me, as I'm thinking about the story, as I'm thinking about these, this narrative that's going on, I've always assumed Leith Pierre, oh, he's just like, a guy at the company is kind of like cooking around doing his own thing, he's vaguely aware of it, but he's not like as intrinsically involved with it. You immediately think like, oh, the CEO, the head of the company, he's the one who's acting on a lot of this. But it seems like he's more on the sidelines, roughly touching this, may be aware of it, but really Leith Pierre and, uh, like in Project Playtime, the doctor, uh, those two seem to be the ones that are most involved with this initiative, pushing it forward, and the ones responsible for it. So, like, that helps me just know who to pin a lot of this on and who we should be really focusing on when it comes to this story moving forward. He is not happy. Wait. Oh, hold on. Is that it? That is it. Hold on. Okay. What was that at the end? It was a house. 338. So 338. It's, it's, so the, clearly they ended on this and it's like a little pop in at the end. Because uh, it's, it's going to be important, right? So 338. What time? What was the time limit of that? Okay, till 3.38. So they found him. Okay, so he's captured at 3.38. So the hunt happens, then he's captured at 3.38. Okay, so this video is taken right before his capture. Oh, there's his gloves. I see it. 3.38, same day. There's his gloves. Uh, do you have Photoshop pulled up? Yes. Yeah, ask a question. Well, there it is. Perfect. Cool. Cool. Uh, image adjustments, exposure. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. There. So that's what... So... Uh-huh. Look at that big boy! Look at that big boy! Wow, he is taller than a house! It's pretty intimidating. It's impressive that we were able to, like, knock him out of commission by bopping him on the head with a box in chapter one. Like, whoop! Ah. Um... <laughs> that was easy. Um... <laughs> So, what this is telling me is, one, obviously, the, the first thing that you see out of this, right, is like, whoa, Huggy Wuggy's huge, he's the size of a house. We knew that, right? That's not really telling us new information. Instead, what this is really indicating to me 
is that this is where Huggy wanted to run back to. Because he's standing, right? He's standing here, and he's ultimately captured here. And so, if there's the, you know, one of the theories that we've had for a while is, hey, the, the toys are being made out of orphans. You know, the toys are being made out of children. And uh, we know this because of all the, like, test results and, oh, this, this girl passed her test and she seems to be connecting with Candy Cat or whatever. Like, let's fuse them together. That was all in Chapter 2. And, I mean, even in Chapter 1, we assumed it, right? Because there's, like, all the orphan posters on the wall. It's, it's, it's very sus, right? Like, anytime you're seeing, like, a, co- a company in an indie horror game being like, kids are great. You're like, no. No, they're going to do something with those kids. And whether it's the coming from the CEO or Leith Pierre or whatever, like, you know that bad things are going to come to those kids. And so here, this tells me, like, hey, did Huggy, the, or the child that Huggy is made out of, right, it, or children, it's unclear whether it's one, it's a one-for-one one thing with these giant toys or if it's multiple children spirits fused in five things become one thing you know all that good stuff from uh from remnant and and sister location but like whether it's one or multiple but it definitely seems like oh at least one or the spirit that has made the essence that is huggy has run home and is now here right and he just wants to hang out back at his house he wants to go home it's actually really sad that's sad this is really sad that's sad yeah no, it is. Yes. Welcome to indie horror games, Ash. Like it like, is. Like it is nine fifty four a.m. and I am in my feelings right now. You feel that? Yeah. I, that's the thing. Like we all laugh and joke about dead kids and ah, oh, oh, you know, like they were stolen from the pizza place and oh, the the rabbit themed serial killer lured them to the back with promises of cake and dead dogs and now they're inside of living animatronic suits. Like oh, lol. But, like, when you stop and think every once in a while, there's that moment of realization of, like, oh, if I stop and think about it, this is horrific. This is the worst experience that a, that a parent could ever have. Like, it is yeah. the darkest, scariest thing that you could ever have. And so here, same thing. Like, here are these orphan children. Or who knows? Uh, you know, maybe orphans, maybe not orphans. Who knows what level of kids they're using? But, like, uh, you know, at, the, at minimum, we know that they're using orphans. And we're taking them we're gonna give them a home whatever and instead we're putting we're like taking them and putting them into this it's terrible isn't it weird how we're like desensitized to that kind of thing yeah i mean it's weird it's and you have those moments where you're just like oh like emotionally it's almost too much well and i think it uh, and here's the thing right i think the reason why it it's less impactful or less effective is because you're joining it after the fact in a lot of cases. So like Five Nights at Freddy's is a great example of this. You never, to me, it, and, and this is my own personal journey with it, right? Which is the first four or five games or whatever, like you don't see anything really sinister. You don't really get a sense. Like you see maybe like, oh, I'm walking around a Atari themed pizza restaurant and there's like a pixelated purple guy who comes out and like says, you can't save them. And there's a couple of dead bodies sitting in the corners, but they're a bunch of pixels, right? It doesn't matter. It's all artistically rendered, right? But, but, the first, the first book, the first Fazbear Fright book, uh, where they tell you, Into the Pit, where they tell you the story, like, that is the one where you time travel through the ball pit to the moment of the missing children's incident, right? And there's a bunch of kids lined up against a wall, and they're all dead. And the lead-up to that was really the first time that it really hit me, because in the lead-up to that, the, the character, who doesn't know what's going on, but you as a person who's followed the lore you know where this is headed but you hear the story of like the parents crying and like trying to get past the like security tape and you know the, the the like weeping and screaming of like my kid or whatever like what's going on and seeing the context around it and hearing the other people that were affected through the book through the narrative of it i'm like oh yeah this is all and and like it made me really sad and uncomfortable to do it same thing with um Help Wanted. I mean, to this day, I think Help Wanted is probably my my favorite FNAF game, uh, largely because it it shows you at the end, like, oh, I'm a small child, and I, here's here's the bunny man, and he's luring me back. Like, that is sinister. That is creepy. And for the first time in the entire franchise, I'm like, oh, this is what it feels like. This is how bad it is. And then at the end, when you're looking out from on stage, and you're looking at the bunny dancing around, and you know that you're inside the animatronic suit, like... 
I, I, I remember the first time I played that, like, I, I think I did it live on camera, right? Like, I felt cold. I felt numb. I, I, I felt like, oh, like sick to my stomach because of how unsettling that is. And so, you know, I think Poppy Playtime's a chapter three trailer that we both analyzed here and we did a theory about also hammers home the horrificness of this, right? And I think we're going to see that in chapter three. Chapter three, if you haven't seen the trailer, go watch it. We did the theory about it. We did a reaction to it. But basically it's, it's a gas mask and there's a lot of red smoke and it starts with a speech from the, from the company head and then it becomes chi children screaming. And you're like, oh, geez, like, this is what it would sound like. Because we're joining after the fact and we're seeing like, oh, it's just a giant toy or, oh, it's just mommy long legs or, oh, you know, they're living toys and they were made of human flesh, whatever. But to hear the moment when it's happening, to be there in the moment. Yeah, see, Ash is feeling it. Yeah, you don't see me like retracting into my own like shell. Yeah, but, no, it's, it's horrific. Ugh. It's horrific. And I think like, you know... These stories keep us safe from a lot of the, like, most awful things that the stories are about, right? Like, they show us the before, you know, and the lore, and they show us the afterward, but it's the, like, the middle of, like, the stuff that's actually happening, you know, when it's happening. Shutting the door, locking the kids inside, throwing the switch, you know, lowering the knife, whatever it is. Awful. Awful, awful stuff. So, anyway... <laughs> That's my business. That's that's what I do for that's what I do for my life. Those are the games that I talk about. Yeehaw! You know, but they come with mysteries and it's uh, it's unsolved mystery. It's the same reason why all of us, you know, adults, you know, why crime dramas and why crime thrillers are so interesting because we're intrigued by the macabre. We're intrigued by like ooh these like awful things and it, it's why people stop on the sidelines of of a of a highway when there's a crash and like ooh how bad was that. Uh, you know, like, humans are just weird that way. We have that, like, what, Thanatos instinct that yeah. uh, that Freud called it, where we're, like, fascinated by death because it is this, like, unknown to us. And, you know, the dark, creepy, sinister sidelines of society where we're all like, oh, serial killers, ooh, how do they do that? Like, that's fascinating. Oh, terrible, but, like, oh, fascinating. You know, and it's the same thing here. So you solve the, you solve the crime, you learn a little bit about it, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. so that is what I'm interpreting from this. Is like, it's the kid running back. So, uh, before, I, I want to check the comments, but before we do, I do want to view the page source and see if they've hidden anything in the keywords. I don't think they have. Keyword hiding has kind of gone the way of a, of a while. It's, it's been gone for a while. I kind of miss, I miss the days of like the FNAF teasers where like, it was hidden in the dark or like it's hidden in the keywords. I, I feel like people have kind of dialed it back and made it much more easier and and uh, easier for everyone to kind of like interpret so there's less of that like let's pick it apart at the details yeah this is video sharing camera phone camera phone free oh free upload sweet thank goodness um not a whole lot there any other where's the other keyword Boop. yeah keyword nothing all right video recording all that stuff yeah so nothing nothing exciting in the keywords unfortunately that would have been cool uh all right so let's see what the comments are saying Huh. Jacob Setla. Can't wait for Matt Pat to make a 20 minute video. 20 minutes. I didn't even have to try that hard. 20 minutes is me just watching the video. I kind of want you to comment like bet. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, it's happening right now. Yeah. I am, I am literally commenting bet right now. It's true. I, no, you know what I need to comment? The Waffle House has found its new host. <laughs> yes. Done. It's posted. Yes. There it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I see you, meme. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Mob Entertainment went overboard with it, uh, especially the bodies being blurred. Yeah, I mean, it, it went there. Experiment 1170 one, facility being hunted down. With lore. lore is probably hidden everywhere, especially the last scene, probably filled to the brim with lore. What how map I will react. Here it is. This is me reacting. King's Lynn Road. That's awesome. Um, according to the gaming community, uh, it's okay, it seems like Experiment 1006, also known as the prototype, and likely former CEO uh, Elliot Ludwig let Huggy Wuggy into the ventilation system. Yeah, so that is interesting, right? Um, they they start this thing. That's actually a really good call out, Isaiah. Uh, they start this off being like, we don't know how he got out. And so, yeah, you're totally right. Like, it was experiment 1006, maybe shutting down the cameras or avoiding the cameras. And then, you know, or shutting down security, whatever, letting Huggy out. And so Huggy escapes. Um, the thing that's also interesting is the idea that 
Huggy doesn't attack anyone until he himself is attacked, right, and trying to be captured. And I think, like, and I think that's, again, you, st uh, you start these games being like, oh, like, they're the villains. Look at how bloodthirsty they are. Look at that they're trying to capture us and kill us and whatever. That's, I'm, I'm st I think more and more, the more I see this, and even this video kind of supports it, Huggy isn't naturally violent. He's, he's a starved animal. He's hungry. He's a scared kid. And if he's being attacked, yeah, he's going to have to lash out and, and kill people. But, you know, he's, he's starving inside of the factory. He wants out. He's, be, he's trapped there. And, and yeah, so I, I don't think that, like, the mommy law, which makes me feel kind of bad about killing him in the game and, and chapter two with mommy long legs. The more and more I see of this story, the more and more I'm convinced that we are not the villains here. I think the more and more I see of it, it feels like, you know, us, our characters, all of them who are keeping these things that didn't want to be made, these creatures that didn't want to be created, trapped in the toy factory, the more, like, we're the villains. You know, the people we're playing as in, in Project Playtime trying to make more giant toys. The, the guy in, in the actual main game, Poppy Playtime, going through, I feel like, I don't know if he's redeemed at this point or what, but it seems like he's going through and he was involved in some way at some point in the process, right? Like, he's involved with this. So whether he's good or bad, it's unclear, but at, at least to begin with, he caused this to happen. So the fact that Huggy, on his rampage out here, just wanted to run home, just wanted to stand next to his house. Right, it's sad. It's tragic. Like, and we killed him with a box! Sure, he was hunting us through a vent, but we're probably the one who put him there in the first place. And we're like, boop, boop, no, I'm knocking down. We're all like, yay, we survived Huggy Wuggy. No, I think, I think what, what Poppy Playtime is leaning us towards is the ultimate, like, rug pull of like, hey, you were the terrible person the whole time. You got Mommy Longlegs' arms stuck in a grinder to the point where her body, like, basically popped like a pimple? That was, that was an employee who was shoved into that. You know, and sure, they're like hungry and a little bit of, of aggressive towards you or whatever, but like, they, they didn't want to be there in the first place. You turned them bad. If anything, you turned them bad. So anyway, like, I think that this story is, is winding up for that big rug pull of like, you know, we were the bad guy the whole time. And it, it makes me sad to think about like, oh yeah, we, we killed Huggy. I do feel bad about that. I should feel bad about that. Um, wow, this is crazy. Cool. Uh, Kiwi Queen, a, a very interesting extra detail. Huggy, see, Kiwi Queen, Kiwi Queen and I on the same on the same wavelength here. Huggy didn't go on a murder rampage around the facility when he got out of his cell. He went directly to the exit, even though a few employees apparently saw him leave, meaning that he passed him up. Just kind of shows what his motives are. He wanted to get out. He only attacked when they were after him and shot at him. Yes, knowing those sort of conditions that Huggy's been kept in and the fact that he's mostly like, made out of a dead orphan, I was rooting for him the whole time. Yeah, boy, run, my boy, get out of there. So true, Bessie. It's true. It's true. So true. Okay. One, one more. Uh, this changes so much about what we already know. We know that in 6, 1892, Huggy Wuggy was able to use the ventilation system to escape containment. We know from MatPat's previous Poppy Playtime video that he, wa that he was the factory security to keep the intruders out. Yes, that is something that's been told. Uh, but was also working for the prototype to stop the experiment. So why leave? It can't possibly be real, right? Um, so... I think what this is showing us is that this is the first or one of the first instances of the toys rebelling, right? Or the, the, the giant monsters rebelling, right? Because, like I called out earlier, this is close to the moment where the factory shuts down, right? We're, we're close to 93, which is when BoogieBot comes out, and then it seems like a year or two afterward is when the whole thing shuts down. I think what we're seeing here is 1006 starting his campaign to shut this thing down. He's like, I'm releasing them. I'm letting them go. I'm telling them to attack. Whatever it is, this feels like one of the first key moments of setting up the dominoes that ultimately result in Playtime Co. collapsing and, you know, Project Playtime happening and then us being brought back in, in Poppy Playtime. Like, this is it. This is... 1006 starting to like seed out the the discontent starting to let people out and uh saying like hey we're gonna shut this thing down because this is not good for anyone that's it so uh this is cool also tyler ooh, i like the tyler here i said one more but here we go big theory this is a big one a bit long but bear with me okay it is a bit long so we'll just <laughs> it's a bit long welcome to the 30 minute video where i talk about this uh there are multiple big huggy wuggies well we know that there's um 
Kissy Missy. So we know that there's at least another big version of Huggy Buggy, at least. And this one is not the same as we saw in Chapter 1. It is, however, the one we see or play as in Project Playtime. If you look at this monster, at his monster loading screen in Project Playtime, it says, This Huggy appears to be a living giant version of the famous Playtime Co. toy. In recent years, a giant statue was added to the factory's main lobby, but appears he was far from inanimate. This, at least to me, implies that there are multiple. Ah, I think you might be reading into that. Uh, for what it's worth, the character designs between Chapter 1 and Project Playtime are... That was the thing I was going to say, is have we looked at the visual differences between Chapter 1's Huggy and Project Playtime's Huggy? The animations are different, and eh, the jump scares are different. I'd say you would need, like again, like a different colored bow tie, a little different tie around there, uh, or different colored gloves or things like that. Uh, if you saw the ARG series, the character Ro Rowan Stoll expresses concern about the installation of nanny cams in the lobby, Huggy's eyes, which you can clearly see in the picture. Yeah, this Huggy doesn't appear to have those. Uh, I, we might be stretching that one. I, I don't necessarily disagree, because in a company where you're making, you know, you need a bunch of these giant toys, and in Project Playtime, we're making more giant toys, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if they made more than one Huggy Wuggy. It seems like to make sense. Like, you're not just making like, this is the one candy cat. This is the one Kissy Missy. This is the one. I, like, it feels weird to me that they would just make one of every iteration of their toy. That seems silly. So I don't disagree. I like the idea of there being multiple Huggies. I just don't know if there is enough evidence at this point to support that, or if that's just me kind of wishful thinking, headcanon stuff, you know? So Wait, question. Yeah. So, I've seen some comments say that uh, the kid was probably an orphan. Yeah. So, I feel like that makes it worse if he's going back to, like, a house, right? Like, is that the last house that he remembers? Or? That's, well, that's, and, and that's my question, right? It, and that's why I, earlier when I was talking about it, I was couching the way I was saying it. Yeah. Because, I mean... He's an orphan who might have been being fostered Yeah, at, at that home. Like, that's a possibility. Maybe at some point, Playtime Co. did start using kids uh, who came from households and families. Maybe that home is itself an orphanage. It doesn't really look like what a stereotypical orphanage would look like, but, you know, maybe, like, it's in a residential area, which it wouldn't be zoned for. So, like, that one is the least likely. But I think that there are ways to... Because I thought that too, right? I'm like, oh, why would an, an orphaned child be standing outside of this particular home? But it could be fostered in the home. Maybe that is the home that he or she remembers before being orphaned. Like, again, like you said, like maybe uh, they, were, they were left an orphan through some means, like the parents left or the parents died or whatever. Like, there's any number of explanations for that. So I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, I, I had that thought too of like, oh, it's unusual for him to go back. So. Huggy, if you ever just want to like eat a Big Mac together and just like hug and talk, like, let me know. Yeah. Huggy, man. It's, it's like, Huggy's the hero of Huggy Buggy, man. Yeah. It's sad. So anyway, that's a little bit of discussion about that. This is cool. I, I love this. I am very excited that Project Play, or that uh, Poppy Playtime, that Mom Games understands like, hey. Let's keep the conversation going around our game. Let's keep the lore going. This is great. Um, I thought this was incredibly well done. I think they went way harder on this than, than they needed to. It worked so effectively. I mean, it's so awesome to see uh, companies, developers, creators understanding the content ecosystem and being able to riff off of it. Like, yeah, yeah, let's do our version of an analog horror. Yeah, absolutely. It makes total sense. We're in that era, after all. So cool. So, so cool. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff here to chew on. And I just, again, like, I think that this is a really fascinating world with some really compelling characters and some compelling mysteries. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that there's a happy ending for the toys somewhere out there. We'll see. Because I feel more and more, it feels like they're the victims of this whole thing, which is really sad. So anyway, let me know your theories down in the comments below. Uh, are they good guys? Are they bad guys? Who are we in Poppy Playtime? I'm, I'm curious. Are you still playing Project Playtime? Actually, that's, that's what I'm curious about because that one came out, what, about a month ago? A month and a half ago at this point? Um, I haven't been keeping track of it. Have they updated it? Are there more tapes to be found? Uh, maybe. Oh, maybe there's more tapes. I don't know. But let me know if we need to be keeping track of that one, what updates they've made there. Are you still playing it? All that. Uh, and as always, my friends, uh, I'll, I'll see you in the next video. So that's Poppy Playtime for today. Fingers crossed that Chapter 3 doesn't disappoint and gets into that dark, creepy stuff that we were talking about because yeehaw, that's the content that we love. Thank you for being excited to watch my lore breakdown. There it is, friendos. We'll see you in the next video. Remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video for you. See ya!